Hello and welcome to Crick Info Analysis. Uh, today we have with us Sanjay Manjrekar and we are going to talk about India's performance in the ODI series so far. They've played five games, they've won two of them, tied one and lost two. More than that, it's there, there's a, there are a lot of subplots to this series going in. Um, first of all, we'll ask Sanjay how he sees the series has gone on. Uh, certainly better than the test series. So you can say from that standpoint that there's been an improvement. But I think it's very important. Uh, we still actually a lot of time, you know, confuse or sort of uh, merge test cricket, one day cricket together when we are assessing, you know, performances. I think we've got to learn to keep test cricket, one day cricket and T20 cricket separate because these are completely different formats. The sport is the same, but these are different ball games. So, you know, when India was failing miserably in the test matches and their performance in England as well, 4-0 and, you know, all that. It continued to be a good one-day team. Uh, didn't play well in England, but quickly came back strongly against England in the home series, uh, that one-day series uh, against England. And here again, you know, they've been encouraging performances. So India as a one-day team definitely is uh, is not that much of an issue as the test team is. So from that standpoint, uh, the one-day team has shown at least some fight against the opposition as against the test team, which really struggled. Uh, one of the striking features of this team has been Dhoni's leadership and his batting. What happens from Test to ODS? What do you think happens? I don't know. Actually, purely looking at his batting skills and looking at his uh, overall batting ability, which includes technique, uh, footwork, his temperament, there's nothing for me you know, to see that this guy is not meant for Test cricket. Uh, you know, he can easily average um, 40 in Test match cricket. Um, and also, I'm talking about overseas uh, performances. You know, uh, I, I don't see Dhoni as a guy who will have a great record at home and has, ha has you know, definite sort of very clear technical issues overseas because he's a pretty good back foot player. I don't think he's uh, afraid of the short ball. You know, he handles it quite well. Uh, he has certain limitations. There's not that much flair when it comes to, comes to test match batting. But for somebody who bats at six and seven, I think there's enough there in Dhoni's batting to make a mark in Test match cricket. So his uh, his recent run with the bat in Test match cricket is something that I've not been able to you know understand why that is the case. But clearly, you know, when it comes to one day cricket, he just feels a lot more confident about himself because his individual performances start you know taking center stage as well. And when the captain is sort of playing well in his own role, then his leadership also becomes that much better. I think Test cricket somewhere he fell when he himself wasn't, you know, coming up with the goods. He perhaps could not take that strong leadership role that he took. And that one comment where he said that I'm the main culprit during the Test match performances, I think shows that he was also pretty hard on himself, that he wasn't quite delivering the goods in Test match cricket. Could he could he have been a little too deferential to the to the seniors in Test cricket and Hence, in ODI cricket, he's putting his foot a uh, foot down a little bit and saying that I don't want all three of them. That hurts my fielding. As I said, you know, as a test match leader, I don't think he feels uh, uh, as much of a commander of the team as he feels uh, when he's with his one-day outfit. And I think very soon, very early in his leadership, he realized how the Indian culture, cricketing culture works. And in fact, the Indian culture as well, where we tend to give a lot of respect to <laughs> elders. So I think he realized that that he could not rock the bot, boat too much when it comes to the senior players. So he's taken a slightly docile uh, role when it comes to uh, the seniors and he's let things be and eventually the way they, they will turn out is the way he'll accept things to turn out, which was slightly disappointing for me uh, coming from Dhoni, especially after the kind of you know test match performances that we had. I thought in Australia he had a chance you know, to make a statement, take control in spite of him himself you know, not coming up with good individual performances. But just to set an example in Indian cricket, he could have maybe looked to rock the boat a bit, which he didn't. But clearly, you know, when it comes to his one-day team, he's a lot more forceful. This press conference that he had when he talked about seniors and their fielding was on a one-day platform, uh, you know. So it clearly you can see that uh, he's a lot more uh, vocal about his thoughts, his ideas when he's in a one-day environment. Uh, the the trouble here is, you say that if you play all three Seva, Gambit, Tendulkar, you you lose twenty runs on the field, but you look at the batting of the youngsters, 
how how pa- how much more patience can you show for them i mean uh, in the test series we were all saying that maybe in in place of lakshman the fourth test rohit sharma should have played but from what we have seen in this odi series do we revisit that stance it's actually the same issue that i brought up in commentary yesterday with tom tom moody about you know how should india now approach this age versus youth um, issue that uh, is uh, very much alive in indian cricket um the problem with aging is uh, you know vvs lakshman dravid and a couple of others you know how much more can you expect from them so perhaps in and with the kind of recent track record that they have is that india has no choice but to look towards you you know however uncertain <coughs> the future is they have to go there but at the same time uh, we've seen you know the way rohit sharma has played in the five innings that he's got in one day cricket you know great opportunities to come in and get a big score he had i think couple of t20 innings as well or maybe one t20 innings so six innings where he hasn't made a mark so also i think the selectors need to convey to you that uh, we are looking towards you we are we have an, a welcoming attitude towards you but you've got to show us that you are desperate to get into the big shoes of the people that will leave the scene and uh, if youngsters keep sort of you know squandering uh, squandering their chances that they get then you know you'll have to start looking at other youngsters but to abandon the policy of you know having youth replace the aging i don't think is even practical at this stage because you i mean to expect another one or two years of the dravids uh, and lakshman and for that matter tendulkar i think would be a bit unrealistic so india has no choice uh, but to look towards youth but also look at youth that's you know the the youth that is really very very uh, driven to carve a niche for itself uh, you spoke about dhoni's statement yesterday and on uh, the firmness that that statement showed that these are three three very big names but i want my i want a team that doesn't 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 look lax on the field that doesn't let the opposition come in but what when when the youngsters are not scoring runs and the captain is still packing you just for your fielding what message does it send to them you just playing for your fielding no i think um, uh, rohit sharma will be under pressure you know there's been five innings failure and uh, i don't know whether he'll play the next game i think he should just to you know give him one final opportunity and then you know there's another youngster waiting in the wings who's got 100 in the last international match so they'll have to um, you know keep looking at different young players if somebody that they thought would be the next big thing hasn't quite delivered that doesn't mean that we go back um uh, to the seniors because i mean finally people might say it's all about performances and who is going to contribute to the team better but as i said with the seniors the problem is that we can't keep looking at them uh, constantly because the youths are not grabbing the opportunity uh, very quickly so there was the case of suresh rain in england yuvraj singh also had his opportunities in the test match he didn't grab it rohit sharma again uh, seems to be you know disappointing in that aspect so if not rohit sharma manoj tiwari if not manoj tiwari there are others in india you know guys like cheteshwar pujara there's badrinath all these you know younger players that india will have to keep looking at i, I believe they've got no choice but to do that uh, what do you make of suresh raina who sort of tends to go under the radar because he and and the captain both say that he's a finisher he gets five overs every game what you get is what you get what do you make of him as a he's got more than that in this series and usually when he finishes the game he has dhoni with him very rare that he alone do it uh i think uh, suresh raina has is exceptionally talented cricketer uh obviously he's got a major technical issue you know to become uh, an established test batsman till he sorts that out i think uh, he, he uh, india cannot look at him as your future test batsman uh, but finally it's about you know delivering in his main skills which is about batting uh Tony also uses him a lot as an off spinner and because he's such a great influence in the field you can see the Raina contribution in any one day match in the field or you know bowling five or six overs but if he keeps failing in his basic or his primary skill which is batting then once again you know i think indian cricket has learned one very important lesson or we should i think all of us uh, need to look at just one thing is performance you know ricky ponting has been dropped uh, by australia on performance they have said that because his form is not good he's been dropped because of performance so when we make performance the king instead of the player 
I think that's when you'll be able to take all these decisions quite easily. And I think the fans and the media, everyone in India, you know, doesn't make it that easy for the selectors to take tough decisions on performances because the reactions in India are different. In Australia, you know, when Ponting gets dropped for lack of performance, I think there is support from the Australian fans because they, they, they'll support the selector because he has recognized that performance is ultimately the most important thing. And if Rana doesn't perform, uh, you know, consistently, he's got to make way for somebody else. So if you keep cricket very simple and not complicated too much by star values and stature, age and things like that, um, you know, you, you keep the game simple and in the long run, you know, Indian cricket will benefit. Um, coming back to this try series, three games to go, you need two to win. The captain and the arguably the best, best performer so far is not available for the next game. What are the big decisions they need to make? Uh, I think more than big decisions, it's about, you know, playing well, um, you know, the, uh, with this rotation policy, which is a compromise and, you know, all that's happened. But finally, you've got decent 11 players on the field. You know, you can't say that because of the rotation policy and certain selections that we are putting a team that just cannot win a cricket match. So once you pick that 11, I think it's about how they execute their skills. And that's where I think the young guns have been uh, disappointing. You know, Virat Kohli now, for example, is the man in form. Uh, he is an established uh, young player in this team, the only one who is who can you know feel comfortable about his position. Um, now, with form also comes responsibility. In fact, he has more responsibility than a Suresh Raina and Re uh, Rohit Sharma to uh, use his uh, you know comfort, which is being in form, being established, to be more consistent. Uh, and I think that is very important. He should not feel that because he's established, he can get away with one or two, you know, uh, failures and some easy shots. So he is actually, if I was the coach, I would put more pressure on somebody like Virat Kohli to get you runs than Rohit Sharma and Suresh Raina. But if you look at the way Raina and Rohit Sharma have got out in this series, I think execution is also a key issue. The problem that I find with both Suresh Raina and Rohit Sharma is that when they need to sort of release pressure, they feel obliged to play the big shots. And with big shots, you know, comes the big risk. And invariably in these conditions against the attacks that they're getting here, you know, when you try and play the big risk shot, you're getting out. In India, against the same attack, you know, the big risk shots generally come off. And I think that is how these guys have, uh, you know, grown up playing international cricket or domestic cricket is that when they are in trouble, if they have three or four dot balls, if they want to release pressure, they hit a big shot and it comes off and they are fine. Here in Australia, you can't do it. One problem is, of course, the boundary ropes are further and the pitch also, you know, the ball will do something after it pitches instead of just coming predictably on your bat. So I think that is the learning that Suresh Raina and Rohit Sharma should uh, quickly, I mean, that is what they have to adjust here in Australia is give a little more respect to the conditions to the bowlers and look to have a safer sort of option to get yourself uh, you know going um the main points of debate so far have been around focused around batting and fielding how do you see the bowling shaping up uh i think bowling is doing okay fine actually um, you know more than okay i think umesh yadav is showing that uh, you know he's blessed with speed uh, it's not that one match is bowling at 130 and one at 145, 50 is bowling consistently at good speed. So there's something there that India can work with. Vinay Kumar, I think, is very much at home in the one-day environment. So he's somebody that India can you know look forward to. They tell me that he's a very hard-working cricketer. So he's a guy who will make the most of you know what he's got. So that's uh, some good news coming there. Um, in the spin, I think uh, R Ashwin has been slightly disappointing. But uh, I think we can still work with the bowling that India has got. And I think Dhoni is pretty good working with bowling limitations. What he perhaps needs is more, you know, batting and fielding support. Um, thank you, Sanjay Majraka, for joining us. Uh, we look forward to hearing more from you during this tournament. This is Siddharth Monga signing off for Quick Info Analysis.